Hi, I'm Siu Ling Hui with part 5 of a video series about how your financials can help you manage and drive business success. In this video, we'll look at the use of liquidity ratios as business management tools. In an earlier video in this series, we discussed how profitability ratios like gross profit margin, profit before tax margin, and so on, provide better insights into the performance of a business than just the raw profit numbers. A ratio shows the relationship between two numbers, such as profit and sales. Ratios like profitability margins tell you how efficient your business is in converting sales to profits. It allows you to benchmark against your past performance and against competitors or industry averages. Now let's look at ratios about your business liquidity or solvency. Liquidity is vital to the survival of a business. Liquidity ratios are used to assess the solvency position of your business at a particular point in time. I stress the use of the word position because these ratios are about your balance sheet and the balance sheet is a snapshot of your business at a specific point in time. These liquidity ratios are indicators as to whether your business has the ability to meet its existing short-term obligations and if it can continue to do so even if something goes wrong. The two common measures of liquidity are the current ratio and the asset test or quick ratio. We'll look at what each one measures and then discuss their uses and limitations as tools for managing business liquidity. First, let's develop two different scenarios for month 6. We'll assume that sales are $12,000 this month and keep the 80-20 credit to cash sales mix. The difference between the two scenarios will be in debtor collections. For scenario A, Debtor collections will be $5,830. For scenario B, we'll have some slow paying debtors and reduce collections down to $3,410. These debtor balances include goods and services tax, the equivalent of value added tax. All other variables like inventory holdings, supplier terms, wages and tax rates are the same as we've used in past examples. The profit and loss for the two scenarios are identical. The impact of the speed of data collections shows up in the balance sheet. Look at the balance sheet for the two scenarios. The difference is in the mix of cash and data balances. Data collections in scenario A are higher than in scenario B. So obviously cash balances are higher in A and debtors are higher in B. Now let's look at the two most commonly used liquidity ratios for these two scenarios. The current ratio is the ratio of total current assets to total current liabilities. The current category means that these items are due within 12 months. At this stage, we don't have any non-current assets or non-current liabilities. That's things that go beyond 12 months. The higher the ratio, that is the greater the amount of current assets relative to current liabilities, the more liquid or solvent the business is deemed to be. You can see that the current ratio has decreased from 2.5 as at the 31st of May to 2.4 at the 30th of June for both scenarios, even though the mix of cash and debtors is quite different in the two June scenarios. But the current ratio is not considered a good measure of liquidity because it includes inventory. Inventory takes longer to turn to cash. It's not considered a particularly liquid asset. Because of the illiquid nature of inventory, the asset test or quick ratio is considered to be a better measure of liquidity. With this ratio, inventory is excluded from total current assets. You can see that the asset test or quick ratio is lower than the current ratio because of the elimination of inventory. It's always useful to look at both current and asset test ratios. A very big difference between the current ratio and the quick ratio means that inventory is a pretty significant proportion of your current assets. So how do the current and asset test ratios help you in managing your business? These ratios only provide an aerial view of your business's liquidity at a point in time. You can tell at a glance whether there's liquidity in the business or if it's bone dry. They provide a useful first-pass assessment of whether a business has potential solvency issues. That's why financiers look at these ratios. High numbers for current and asset test ratios imply that the business has a bigger buffer to cover its short-term commitments even if something went wrong. If a business has very low current and asset test ratios, that should immediately ring alarm bells about the business's liquidity and its chances of survival. For example, if the asset test ratio is say 1 to 1, 
That means the business has only just enough cash and debtors to cover its short-term liabilities, maybe even less if there are other miscellaneous items included in current assets. It means that there is no wiggle room at all for timing issues or things going wrong. Now, just because a business has healthy-looking liquidity ratios, it doesn't necessarily mean that the business is very liquid. In an aerial view of a landscape, you can see if there's water around or not, but you can't tell how deep the water is or whether the rivers have a healthy flow or are stagnant unless you go in closer. So it's the same with a business. You need to look more closely at the quality of the assets and liabilities that make up the current and quick asset ratios. To do this, you use quality indicators like days debtors, days creditors, and inventory turnover. These ratios combine information from both the profit and loss and the balance sheet. Let's go through these three main liquidity quality indicators before we look at how liquidity ratios are used as business management tools. Days debtors, which is also called days receivables, tells you the average time it takes for a business to collect its debtors. Shorter days debtors indicate greater efficiency in debtor management. If days debtors are being calculated with less than 12 months numbers, then you either annualize the sales figure or adjust the number of days in the equation. So if you were using half year sales, then you would either multiply the sales number by two or half the 365 days in the equation. If sales are done on both credit and cash terms, it's better to use the credit sales figure rather than the total sales figure. But if you're calculating days debtors of your competitors or industry average for benchmarking your business, you won't be able to get that level of breakdown of their sales numbers. So you would use the total sales figure to calculate days debtors. And that's perfectly okay as long as you compare it with your days debtors calculated on the same basis. Now, instead of using the debtors balance as at the end of the period to do this calculation, you can use the average of the debtors balances as at the start and end of the period. I prefer to use the average debtors as I think it's more reflective, particularly if the business is growing rapidly. If your business is subject to taxes like value-added tax or goods and services tax, these taxes are not included in the sales figures, but they form part of debtors' balances. So debtors' balances must be adjusted to exclude GST or VAT for this calculation. Days creditors, which is also called days payables, tells you the average time that a business takes to pay its trade creditors. The calculation works the same way as days debtors, except you are using trade creditors and purchasers figures. You do the same adjustments like annualizing purchases, using average creditors, and adjusting for taxes like goods and services tax or value added tax. If a business is showing a very high days creditors number, it may be a sign of financial stress that the business is stretching its creditors to manage its cash flow. If you are considering extending credit terms, to a customer and you see a very high days creditors number in the customer's financials, say more than 60 or 90 days, or a figure that's well above the industry average, you might want to consider whether this customer is going to be a problem account for your business. Inventory turnover is an indicator of how fast inventory is converted to sales. It's the number of times you turn your stock over in a year or other shorter period. With a highly seasonal business, annual inventory turnover is not appropriate because you are lumping low and high seasons together. You have to fine-tune the calculation to allow for the effect of seasonality. High inventory turnover could mean one of two things. Efficient stock management, which is good, or excessively low stock levels, which is not good. Being out of stock on a recurring basis leads to a loss of sales and over the long term, loss of customers to your competitors. Make sure you know the reason for high inventory turnover in your business. Balance sheet liquidity ratios used in combination with quality liquidity ratios like days, debtors and so on enable you to track trends in your business's financial position over time. Raw numbers don't give you insights into the changes in the relationship between current assets and current liabilities or changes in the quality of critical assets like debtors and so on. By monitoring these ratios, you can take corrective action as soon as you see adverse, adverse trends developing and stop emerging issues becoming a big problem. 
Seasonality can have a huge impact on the ratios, so always assess the ratios in the context of your business cycle. These ratios also allow you to benchmark your business against your competitors or industry averages. With external benchmarking, keep in mind that other businesses are not necessarily identical to your business, and so you are often not doing a strict apples with apples comparison. But this kind of benchmarking is still a useful indicative guide as to how your business is tracking relative to others in your industry. Business insights from these ratios, particularly days creditors, can be useful when you're deciding whether to extend credit terms to a new customer or not. You don't want to end up playing banker to your customers. The key shortcoming of liquidity ratios and even the ratios like days debtors is that they lack the time dimension. Cash flow, the lifeblood of all businesses, is all about timing. The current and asset test ratios don't tell you anything about the maturity profile of the current assets and the current liabilities, apart from the fact that they all fall due within 12 months. Now, 12 months is a long time in business. To use an extreme example, what if all the liabilities were due to be paid tomorrow, but none of the debtors are due to pay you for another two weeks? Regardless of how healthy these ratios are, if a business doesn't have sufficient cash flow to meet its obligations as and when they fall due, that business is insolvent. Even the quality liquidity ratios like days debtors and days creditors are still relatively big picture indicators. These ratios are useful as the basis for rational forecasting of cash flows. I mean, you wouldn't build forecasts based on 30 days debtors collections if your business reality is that your historical days debtors is 45 or 60 days. Effective cash flow management and asset quality management requires that you have a really good handle on your debtors and the state of your creditor payments. You get this through your age debtors and age creditors reports. Let's look at the balance sheet and age debtors for the two scenarios in month six. Earlier in this video, we made some assumptions about two different scenarios for month six. In scenario A, Debtor collections in month 6 was $5,830, and in scenario B, it was $3,410. In this extract of the balance sheet for the two scenarios, you can see that the current ratio and the asset test ratio in both scenarios are identical, but there's a lot more cash in scenario A. So even though these ratios are identical for both scenarios, the scenario A balance sheet really has much higher liquidity than B because there's more cash. If we calculate days debtors based on average debtors and credit sales figures, you get a little more insight into the quality of the liquidity positions of the two balance sheets. Debtors are slower, that's a lower quality in scenario B than in scenario A. Now, let's look at what the age debtors listings show. Here's a summary of the age debtors listing for scenarios A and B. In scenario B, you have debtors that are now past 60 days, but days debtors for scenario B is 54 days. So the day's debtors ratio doesn't fully reflect the issue of problematic debtors that are now pushing out past 60 days. Let's look at the detailed age debtors for scenario A. There are four big customers that are stretching their payments out past 30 days, but they are still less than 60 days. That's probably not much of an issue. So far, they are paying somewhere between 30 and 60 days. That's kind of consistent with the day's debtors of 47 days. Here's the age debtors for scenario B. In this scenario, the same big four customers are pushing their payments out past 60 days, even though days debtors shows as 54 days. They might be strong businesses, but it's your cash flow they are tying up. Also, one or all of them might be financially stretched and could potentially keep going out to 90 days or more, or worse still, turn into bad debts. This is why you cannot rely just on the asset test ratio or even ratios like days debtors to manage cash flow. They are very high level numbers. They are fine for an overview to identify trends or to flag possible issues. But you must get down to the nitty gritty details of important assets like debtors so you can work out exactly where the potential problems are. Let's see what the all important cash flow statement shows you about scenarios A and B. The liquidity ratios were the same in both scenarios. Scenario B, days debtors were seven days longer than in scenario A. Doesn't sound like a big deal, does it? But look at the cash flow. The cash flow impact of slow paying debtors shows up immediately. In scenario B, you have $7,150 of cash flow being chewed up in trade debtors this month compared to $4,730 in scenario A. Everything else is the same between scenario A and B. You still have the benefit of trade creditors and all those payments 
payable to the tax office, that's the provisions line, funding your working capital. But the net cash flow from operations is only $162 in scenario B versus $2,582 in scenario A. If your cash flow statement shows big changes in trade debtors, inventory, and any other working capital items, and you see adverse trends in your liquidity ratios, start digging deeper to find out what's going on. Here's a recap of what we've covered in this training video. Liquidity ratios are useful for identifying trends and benchmarking your business's liquidity position. And I again stress the word position because we're talking about comparing snapshots in time. And that's the key limitation in their usefulness. You need to dig deeper into the quality of the numbers that lie behind the balance sheet ratios. Ratios like day's debtors, day's creditors, and inventory turnover provide more insight about the quality of the numbers. But the real test of solvency is cash flow. Do you have enough cash coming in in time to cover your payment obligations? None of these ratios provide you with this vital information about timing. Do not rely on ratios for cash flow management. Look at your cash flow statement to see what's happening with your working capital. Use age debtors and age creditors reports to get a good handle on these key balance sheet items. Use systems that allow you to get good insights into what's happening with your inventory. Inventory ties up cash. If you want more information about business financial reviews, business planning, or about financing in general, please put your questions below in the comments or contact me directly through my contact page at incontextfinance.com. Master your cash flow, know your finances, so that you can drive strong, sustainable business growth and thrive. Thank you for watching. If this has been useful, please like and subscribe to my channel.